The Rosie and Bill Show wish to thank our partners in Positivity primary sponsors. The Roselli Agency, based in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, Brian and his team of insurance professionals have been serving the needs of Chester County for more than two decades. The Mallon Agency, located in Springfield, PA, where they take pride in tailoring the right insurance policy for the right client and exceeding expectations every time. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show. Our guest this week realized her calling at a very young age, and she's been pursuing her passion for music ever since. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show singer, songwriter, and South Jersey native, Megan Knight. Hi, Megan. So nice to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's our pleasure, Megan. And I'll tell you, one of the things that really impressed me was the fact that if we turn the clock back, to 2012, you released your first EP and you were generating a lot of buzz at the ripe old age of 14. So my question is, you were doing that at 14, but when did your musical journey start? What was it that drew you to music and got you involved? Um, so I've always been very big into music in general, literally since a baby. My parents were blasting music in the house and it was just a music household. Like that was just a thing. It wasn't strange for music to be the center of attention all the time there was always a radio blasting and it was always my parents like listen to the classical music listen to like dave matthews listen to um pearl jam listen to um like musical type music we were listening to all genres all things all the time and so it, i guess it started when i was born <laughs> to be honest <laughs> but i guess i found an interest around like age seven I was put into piano lessons my favorite teacher moved to Florida so I quit and played softball for a few years and then found my way back to music in um, summer camps and all these different things but I never pursued it officially until I was 13. Wow you waited that long. <laughs> yeah. You know, a little kid. I was always like action packed and I was always entertaining. I was the kid that would throw up a camera like this and I'd put on a whole show in production with commercials and singing segments. And I just had a lot of interest going on at a young age, but it was all centered in like entertainment. Well, it's interesting that you say that, Megan, because we we see that from like high school you made a lot of key decisions centered around music. Talk to us about that because I'm curious to know, would you do it again? And what kind of impact did those decisions have on your life? I would definitely do it again because little did I know 13 year old me would change my entire career path for the rest of my life. Um, I mean, I sacrificed a lot. I missed a lot in school. I had no social life whatsoever, pretty much, but I would not change it for the world. Um, and I would do it all over again. Well, one thing while you were doing that, you also released your full, first full length album when you were 15 and it yes. came with a lot of accolades and awards and recognition did that album kind of validate even at that young age that you had made the right decision? It definitely did because actually my whole career was a domino effect of, oh, I think this is definitely my life path. Um, starting back when I was 13, I had a really bad softball injury and that's why I learned guitar. And um, I played that first open mic and they asked to hire me. So, and then when I was 14, it started winning accolades. So I'm like, all right, everything that I'm doing is kind of like pushing me like deeper down this path. And I feel like this is just what I meant to do. Well, you mentioned Muscle Shoals and you've really seemed to resonate with that place. Talk to us about that and how has that impacted you as an artist and what's so special about it? So the Shoals is definitely my other home. Um, they've been mentoring me since I was 14 years old, everybody in that whole town, pretty much. It's a very small town and it's very much a family vibe. 
Um, and just the soul there and I like the, the music is just so good. I mean, you probably won't completely even understand until you're like physically there and can like feel the energy. Um, but every single person walking down that street is talented. They're all, they're all pretty much musicians and it has impacted me deeply because they're also very good storytellers and they can fit like the craziest things in two lines even like they can tell like entire stories so quickly and like so vividly that I've never seen it done like that before anywhere else in the country at least this far in life but they have something special you, you spend a lot of time there and also in Nashville how would you compare or contrast the two musically um, so they're both uh, ha have similarities but also major differences and what they would be in my eyes are um i feel like nashville has become a very commercial sound which is a good thing it's very contemporary and i love that um i recorded my 2019 single bad decision um in nashville with a very hot producer like he just worked for kane brown lauren elena he's got a lot going on and i learned a lot from him from that process but in the shoals it's more from a deep storytelling standpoint and not going with the constraints of genre. It's pretty much they write a song and they tell a story and it comes from the heart rather than trying to um, fit in a little box where I feel like Nashville, they just want things to be ready for, you know, commercial consumption where the Shoals is like that too, but I think they prioritize uh, the storytelling more than, you know, the formula. It almost sounds like Shoals nurtures inspiration and exploration more at this point. Yes, 100%. That's the best way that I would probably sum that up. But they definitely come together, too. There's a lot of uh, crossing paths between Nashville and the Shoals, especially nowadays, because a lot of people from Nashville are now gravitating to the Shoals as we've expected years ago you know it's just all finally coming to fruition now um but they definitely like inter intertwine with each other because even from my experience of 2019 working in nashville i've brought things that i've learned from that experience to the shoals and i'm hybriding the two sounds together to create something new um which i'm super excited about megan i have to tell you, you you've touched on something in a, in a couple different ways that was actually part of a a question that I wanted to ask you because um, I was talking with a few friends and, and telling them that we were going to have you on our show tonight. And, and you know, so many people seem to get, um, they want to talk about genres. Oh, what genre, what type of music? And the one thing I noticed with your music is I couldn't really put a label on it. And I think that's a really good thing. So when somebody just asked me earlier today, how would you describe the music? What genre? I said, it's just awesome. <laughs> it's all of the above. And I think you've done an amazing job of blending the songs and the stories, and you've really created a unique sound. I, I love the sound. And I'm just wondering, is that, do you just let the song go as you're putting something together? Do you just kind of let it go where it goes and don't even concern yourself with the genres? Yes, that's actually how I've always written. And same with every co-writer I've ever surrounded myself with. So maybe that's had a significant impact on me as well. Um, my project State of Mind that I released a few years ago was a very cinematic record. And I actually wound up getting my first TV show placement with my song. And it's so different than the music we're doing now. But my first mentor, well, actually is my second mentor, Jamie Meyerson, who I did that album with, he was the same way. We didn't know what genre we were making until we were already deep into like writing the songs and then, you know, going going into the programming and seeing what was formed. But um, as, I, as I grew older out of that project, I realized that every genre that I do has this country inflection to my voice that people compare it to. So it was easy for me to find my way in country. And once, once I found my way in country, I was like, all right, I can definitely stay in this form of a genre now. Um, I still am interested in doing sync in the background, to be honest. Um, I love that world. But I, I do identify as a country singer now. And sometimes it's more country rock. Sometimes it's more country pop. Um, but definitely country now. Well, it's interesting because when I listen to and watch your my drama video, 
if I didn't know you were country, I don't think I would have thought it from that particular song. Yeah, I mean, I, you kind of to be honest, to make to make everybody happy, you kind of like just got to like call it a genre. Um, Taylor Swift, <laughs> the queen of you know, label it whatever you want, and I'll just like identify as today I'm pop, today I'm country, like whatever, whatever floats the boat of people people being able to identify you. Um, so we try to we try to call it country, and that one we just say it's country pop, so people feel like satisfied. <laughs> And I think the, the country music has evolved to that point where it is a wider audience and a wider net that you can cast. That song also was interesting to me because you you said you were inspired by the five stages of grief. Talk to us about that. So initially when I started writing this record, I didn't realize it was going to be about the five stages of grief, but then quickly I realized that's exactly what it was. And it made me very excited because I'm like, oh my gosh, this could heal so many people. Uh, we first started writing, what was the first single? I think we finished Novocaine first off of the project. And it was like a title I've had in living in my phone for many years. And um, all the songs wound up coming together because we started writing singles. Then we wrote my drama. And I was like, wait, if these are starting to piece together as a puzzle. And then we wrote Ticket to the Grave. And I'm like, wait, this is like a theme. So then we added later on Easy to Forget, which is, you know, like overcoming and like becoming more empowered from like Novocaine was like getting to the point of being so sad that you feel nothing at all, numb from the Novocaine. Um, but yeah, we're like, if we create this to be like a circle of the five stages of grief and walk people hand in hand through like a heartbreak journey, I think this could seriously impact a lot of lives and help a lot of people. So we totally took it full reign and finished the project with our five songs eventually and put that out and said, oh, I, hope, I hope people like feel good about it. Was that personally inspired? Oh, definitely. But um, we don't, we don't get too deep in it. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of my writing in life is from a very like personal place. Um, and that EP was definitely super therapeutic to me. It's helped me through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, having listened to all of the songs and seen the videos, I think you've helped a lot of other people uh, from a therapeutic standpoint as well. And again, this, regardless of what genre or however people want to label it, each one of those songs is awesome. And speaking of songs, you've got a new one uh, coming out at the end of March on March 31st, something about dancing and a mirrors involved or something like that. So what can you tell us about the new song? Oh my God. I'm so excited for this new single. Uh, since uh, 2019, when I recorded in Nashville with that bad decision single, I've been trying to get that crossover country sound to merge with the Shoal sound, which is what we did for my drama. And we found a little bit of that hybrid going on in my drama, but with Dancing in the Mirror, I feel like we've hit my money spot of genre, speaking of all this genre talk. And it is, you know, the crossover country, like kind of like mainstream sound, but like not completely. And I'm just so excited. It is all about empowerment. It's about feeling good. My goal has been healing writing songs to heal people from the beginning. Um, but this song I think really could make a lot of people feel great. And I've, I've never had a song like this before. I've never had a song that actually is um, like pure feel good vibes. All my songs usually are like healing, but they're a little sad. And this one's just pure bliss. So um, hopefully, hopefully helps people out. Empowerment feel good I don't well, know. it's it, it's coming through just in the way you're describing it the passion and the energy is literally coming through as you're describing the song so i think that's fantastic because a lot of times people will talk about you know the new song or what's what's on the horizon just because they feel they have to so seeing that true passion and love for what you're doing and for the song it is just awesome to see so we're really looking forward to it we know there's kind of a teaser video out for it i think on on your youtube channel i've seen on uh, social media i've seen and just from that 20 or 21 seconds it looks great and sounds great too thank so you we can't so much to hear the rest of it yeah i'm now, so excited we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to doing one last thing before we wrap up. And that's that's a segment that we kind of, we dust off every now and then, especially when we have a guest on that we're having a lot of fun with and enjoying our conversation. And the fact that you're local, 
we actually added a little bit of a local twist to this too. So the segment's called Rapid Fire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you a series of questions rapidly and whatever the first thing is that comes to your mind, just say whatever it is. So how's that sound? Okay, a little scary. Don't worry, Megan. It's generally <laughs> not rapid. <laughs> I okay. think I'll be good. Really fun. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll ask the first one. Okay. As a songwriter, is there anyone in particular that you'd love to co-write with that you haven't written with yet? Party. Definitely. As a singer, is there anyone that you'd like to perform with or tour with? 100%. Let me really think this through. Um, oh, my goodness. This isn't so rapid fire for me right now. That's okay. <laughs> um, Eleni Wilson. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we saw you did a, a cover of hers um, on your YouTube channel, too, because I remember you had the Phillies hat on, I think, when you were doing that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that segues into my next question. Your favorite Philly team is? Oh man, the I love all of them. I love the the Flyers, the Phillies, the Eagles. Like I go to it all. I love it all. Do you have a favorite player? Um, I'm actually really bad at like choosing the players because I my boyfriend's a baseball player. He's my favorite, and he's not on a Philly team, so like. Don't hate me, Philly. <laughs> is he professional? Yeah, he's my favorite. Who does he yeah, play he for? The, the Twins. Wow. Well, there you go. Yeah. You can't say Phillies then, can you? <laughs> no, I can't. That's what I'm saying. Like, he'll always be my favorite. Sorry, Phillies. You're not my favorite. He's oh. got to be my favorite. <laughs> okay. We That's okay. You know what? The, twi the Twins are a great organization and a great team, and they're not really like a rival or anything. We only maybe see them once a year in the interleague play, so... And it's not even every year, really. But okay, so I've got one last one for you. And that is, do you have a favorite cover song that you love to perform live? It honestly depends on the day and my mood for it to be my favorite of the day. But more times than not, um, it's usually Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. It's just, it moves so many people. And it, that song actually changed my career um, as well. It got me started in music. So I would definitely have to say Landslide overall. That's a great song. That's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. What have you got coming up in 2023 for the rest of the year? We have tons of singles coming out. So we should be releasing um, a new single every six weeks. Uh, so a lot of content. Definitely keep an eye out. And tons of shows in the tri-state. Uh, that's mainly like where we like to stay nice and local for now. Eventually we're, we want to branch out. But um, every other month I'm heading to Nashville and the Shoals to work and play as well. So lots going on all the time. That's wow. exciting. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to the next single coming out on March 31st. And then you're saying, so every six weeks after that, there's going to be something else as well? Yes. Yep. Oh, it gets even better. Lots of <laughs> fun. We've been working really hard. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Megan, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. We, we know that um, with all that you've got going on and all that you've already done, your future is definitely bright and we look forward to keeping an eye out and, and seeing how far you can go because we know it's you got a long way to go. And we're actually hoping, since you said you're playing in the tri-state area a lot, we're hoping to uh, see if we can work out on our calendars a chance to come and see you and uh, meet you in person. But we again, we just want to thank you so much for joining us. Wish you all the best with the new song and every six weeks thereafter. Thank you so and much. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Megan. And folks, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Hey, what's up? It's Vin. Can't make it to the phone right now. Just leave a message and I'll give you a call back. Hey, it's Megan. I was actually just calling because I haven't heard from you in a while and I was really hoping to see you again. Um, if you get this, give me a call back. All right. Thanks. Bye.
drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble But when it comes to you, I better be careful The way you move and the words you say Paint the portrait of my craving every day Madness made a mess. I confess it was tragic.